Hi and welcome back to Mike Makes It. There's a plane and that's the view we get from the back of the garden. It is obstructed in the southern direction though. But there's 1.2 meter aerial up there on the 1090 band to pick up aircraft. And under here is a little box I put together with a Raspberry Pi and a USB dongle to pick up uh, the flight. It's for flight location, not the actual um, messages. And um, this can be picked up on a, a PC, laptop, phone, etc. Um, and I'm going to build another one. I'll give you a little bit more information after we've done it. But yeah, Flight Radar 24. Um, very good system. Basically, uh, all planes worldwide um, are picked up on the, on the system. There's many people around the UK and the rest of the world that contribute to data. Um, basically, my little rig here picks up the aircraft that they fly over. That data gets sent back to um, the Flight Radar 24 uh, headquarters, so to speak. Um, and they put that up on the website so you can pick up um, literally um, certainly commercial flights all around the world. I find it very interesting. I'm sure a lot of people don't. But uh, I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to build another one of these. And this time we're going to have a little display incorporated into it. That's what's going to be different. And I want to do some experimenting with bigger aerial um, amplifiers, etc. So uh, that's the plan today. But yeah, off to the garage and uh, build up another one of these. But these little boxes, £12 from Amazon, waterproof. A couple of cables, aerial and power going into it. Put a little hat on it to keep uh, a bit more of the rain off. So that could sit up in the garden. It's hooked into the Wi-Fi. Um, so merrily transmitting this data to uh, Flight 24, Flight Radar 24. But yeah, to the garage now. All right, we're back in the garage. You see this is a different color box. It was a little bit cheaper from Amazon. So it's meant for power um, extension sockets to be left in the garden. There's a waterproof seal going around. So it should keep the water ingress out. Let's hope so. Um, there's a Raspberry Pi 4 sitting in the old box there. You can use Raspberry Pi 3. I've not tried the Pi Zero. Apparently some people have had success with that, but I've got a Pi 4, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, and the, this is what's going to be different from the other system I got up in the garden. There's a five inch touchscreen display I'm going to incorporate into the Pi. I want to keep the system up in the garden running 24 hours a day. So that's really the idea of building a second system. But also um, I want to experiment with this. I want to try, as I said earlier, uh, different aerials, amplifiers, uh, cable setup. So one in the garden at the minute has got a 10 meter coaxial cable from the aerial to the Raspberry Pi. Now, ideally you keep the cables as short as you can. So what I want to do is mount the dongle. This is the, let me get out the box, the RTL SDR.com um, USB dongle. There are counterfeit ones of these out, so make sure you get it from a um, RTL SDR blog site. I'll put links in the description. But basically, uh, SDR, Software Defined Radio. Um, I'm going to try and optimize it for 1090 megahertz. That's the frequency uh, the aircraft tr uh, transmit what I'm trying to pick up on. Uh, and obviously that plugs into the USB in there and a uh, little program on the SDR, uh, SD card and away you go. Um, but the one in the garden is 10 meters away from the aerial so you've got a bit of a cable run going on what I want to try to do is have a very short cable feed in this and, and I have an active USB cable coming back to the Pi so really you're going to do away with 10 meters of cable between this and the Pi hopefully that'll give a bit better signal and also on order I haven't arrived yet is a little amplifier to go between this and the aerial so boost the signal up even more so that's the idea also positions in the garden you can see all the trees behind me i can't move any further back into the garden i could go higher uh, a longer aerial but i'm nestling further back in the tr into the trees so what i want to do is come out of the trees but I i'll lose the height so it's a little bit of a trade-off so i want to see which is better in the trees out of the trees we'll see but Anyhow, construction of this, 
sheet of aluminium is about six mil thick got to get it on the circular saw there trim it down and that's going to form a base unit in the box so uh, we'll speed through what i'm going to do now there's uh, basically cut this up a couple of holes chuck the pie and get the screen on and away we go I'm using a hundred tooth Saxon blade, I'll put links in the description, in um, my bench saw. And it works fairly well. A little bit scary, but nevertheless, you've got the right safety gear on. Uh, I've come out unscathed, so uh, here we go. Just cut one side off here. Um, and I've got to trim a little bit off the other side. So, yeah, here we go. Does give it a really good cut. I think it'll do up to 10 mil, either 6 or 10 mil. But I can check that and again put that in the description. But really good way of cutting aluminium. Right, I'll set up, I'll do the other side. Once again, a great cut. I'll just deburr this, the edges, take the corners off, and uh, we'll start drilling a few holes. All right, there you go. There's the aluminium plate. A bit chunky, really, for what, what we need, but I had it. It works, and uh, it's a bit better than wood, I think, in this case. As I say, I'm going to replicate pretty much what I've already made, because that works, so we might as well keep on that theme. So I'm going to mount a, a double socket there, it's going to have a little extension cable coming out, go into a cable and a plug that will plug in the wall or an extension somewhere. I'm going to have Raspberry Pi sitting approximately there. I want to be able to get the SD card, a micro SD card, out of the back end there, so I don't want to snug it right up to the power point. So that works okay in the garden on the other one. Now, I'm probably not going to use this kind of stick. Uh, well, I am, but it's going to be up on the aerial mast, so I'm going to have an active USB cable down here. Uh, but on the other system, I left enough space to obviously plug this in and mount the aerial on the end. So we're got, kind of going to go for something like that. So if I need uh, to use this system uh, with a USB stick directly into the Raspberry Pi, I still can. But more likely it's just going to be straightforward cable on the finished unit. You could cock it sideways like that. And I thought about doing that one in the garden, but it kind of just doesn't look right to me. And also on this one, you saw this a few minutes ago. This is the display. Excuse me, I'm off shot at the minute, unpacking it for you. But there's a five inch touch screen display and the Raspberry Pi will fit straight on the back. I'm not going to use the case. I didn't use the case in the garden. There's no need to. And the Raspberry Pi will mount straight on the back of this board which will form the display. So I'm certainly not going to put that sideways. I'm going to have it more like that and kind of going to sit there. You don't truly need a display. Um, I kind of fancy the idea of it though. So on, on Mark II, this is what we're going to have. All the links will be in the description for all of these parts. At the moment, um, July 2022, you can't buy a Raspberry Pi for love nor money. For some reason they're all out of stock, no doubt pandemic and everything else but um, nevertheless I had one already so uh, I, I'm up and running I'm sure they're going to come online soon so uh, yeah a few holes in here and away we go in the box itself there are four holes now I managed to put five mil uh, standard cap head screws in there to mount the metal so we're going to do exactly the same I'm just going to mark up four holes in here I've done the socket four holes in here for this area. Uh, then we can just maneuver the pie, just get the best position forward with the screen and a few more holes, but I'll do these main ones first. Right, 
Right, this is fairly straightforward. Just four holes to mount the board uh, and two holes to mount the socket. I'm going to tap the socket out. Uh, it's thick enough alley alley to take that. So, yeah, nice, simple. Here we go. These two holes, they're for the socket, so I'm going to tap those out of 5mm now and we'll try it for size. I did measure these as per box, distance wise. Um, a couple of them are going out a little bit. The same thing happened on the other box, so it's either Mike's measuring or the plastic's a little bit how you're doing. This is fairly square and the measurements are accurate to the box, so it might not be me this time. If you're buying taps, get some decent brand. This is Dorma. Uh, there are other makes, but th they seem to go on and on and on. So you buy the cheap jack ones off, uh, or I was going to say screw fix, uh, but when you get the multi pack with three, four, five, six, etc., uh, threaded size like taps and dies, they tend to be cheaper, so they don't last so long as they're not so sharp. Um, spend a few pound extra and buy individual ones as you need them. So if you're starting out, if, if you haven't got any taps at all, uh, yeah, okay, a set will do. Um, and in the short term, it might work out cheaper. But long term, you probably find the individual ones are going to last a lot longer because the quality is better. That's what I found. I, I've never bought a set. I've just bought the size I need. If I need to do a 10 mil tap, I buy a couple of 10 mil taps to do it with, and I've always got them. Uh, likewise with all the other smaller sizes. Then over the years, you end up with a box of bits and pieces like this. Um, you just go straight to them. You know, it, that's how I've done it anyhow. But those two are tapped out now. I'll temporarily fit this into the base, then we can mark up for the pie. Drill a few holes for that. I've got some plastic standoffs here you've probably seen these before uh bang good special again three mil um thread on the screws there and the and the nuts so uh yeah just gonna need to mark out the alley, alley plate bop four holes in there for the pie and away we go so uh yeah we go ahead and do that before i've drilled too many holes I've had a look at the touchscreen display that I bought. This is a five inch touch in, touch screen display, direct HDMI into it, which is nice because it'll plug straight into the Pi. And if you have a look at it, <clears throat> how it's set up, the Pi does actually mount on the back. There's some sockets there, which will be used for the IO and power for the screen, touch screen side of it. And it comes with two little adapters that are laid actually, um, for, for mine is a, a Pi 4, you use the micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. They do give you another one. If we look in the box here, HDMI to HDMI, which I believe will be fine for a Pi 3. But as this is the top of the screen, or that certainly that's where the top of the display would uh, configure, I've had to turn the whole thing round. So I've now got issues here with the USB ports. Now, ultimately, I'm only going to have a cable plugged into there not a dongle like this. There's no way I'm going to get that dongle in there. The only thing I could do is reverse this like we were going to and turn the whole plate upside down. And that would work fine. However, the micro SD card is tucked away further into the board. You can see there's overhang there. So it's going to be difficult to get to that. So I'm going to leave it kind of like it is. I'm going to suck it up the fact that we're not going to have much space there for USB sockets. But if I did want to run this, I'll just get a right angle USB adapter uh, to go straight into this. So no, no big, big thing. 
but at least I found out now before I got too carried away. So ultimately that's how it's going to mount. You're going to have the main socket there, cables going in, power adapter in there for the Pi, etc. Power in the bottom, aerial in the bottom, jobs are good and away we go. So I'm going to carry on drilling a few holes. I'll bring you back when I've done it, when the Pi's actually mounted on there. Then um, I'm going to have a go off, have a little, little, little look at the software, see if we can get this uh, HDMI screen working. I'm sure we can. Well, that's the screen mounted on the plate. A bit of fiddling around with pillars and posts and stuff. The brass pillars that came with the screen are two and a half mil. The plastic ones I have are three mil, so there's a bit sort of incompatibility. Nevertheless, it's all sitting on there nicely. So I'm going to go indoors now. I have a little fiddle with the software. Uh, fire, fire the screen up. And once that's working, we'll come back and uh, show you the results. Right, this is the one I was working on in the garage. Now it's in the garden. Uh, you can see the display is uh, working away quite merrily there, uh, detecting and displaying actually what this USB stick's picking up. Now we did have this one in earlier. That's the SDR blog one. And I said to you, I'm doing some experiments. I've got um, the Flight Aware Plus stick in there at the moment, just with a 10 meter cable. And we go up here, the sun might get you up to the aerial there. So the plan today, I've got to swap this stick out back to this one, but with an active USB cable. So effectively this 10 meters of coax is going to go down to one meter maximum, feed in straight into this, but with a, an active USB cable. Active means it's powered cable. Um, it's 10 meter length, quite happy to work at that length because of the electronics built into it. Normally a USB cable is only any good for about 5 meters, but there's a 10 meter one going up on here and depending on the results I may run out a 20 meter one to the main um, radar receiver up in the garden. But that's where we are now, I'll give you some more details in the second video. This one's run on a little bit longer than I expected, so um, keep a look out, I've got a couple of weeks of testing to go. Uh, once I've done that, the video will be up online with all details you're going to need. Uh, thanks for watching so far and keep a look out for number two.